Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for July 14th, 2024. Um, first of all, I wanna say thanks to Ryan Littlestone, my colleague over at Forex Analytics for doing the week ahead video last week. If, um, if you enjoyed his video, make sure you jump down in the comments below, let him know how much you enjoyed it. I thought he did a great job. He did such a great job that I'm actually using something similar uh, with this screen here that you can see what's happening this next week as I'm talking about it. Obviously, I'm going to get in the charts and I've got a lot to talk about this week. But anyway, if you uh, liked Ryan's video, make sure you tell him what a great job he did. I think he did a wonderful job. I love listening to it, especially I was on holiday uh, in California um, for the week. So anyway, uh, continuing on, this is a big week this week um, for data. Uh, we, we do have the ECB meeting. You, you can actually see on the screen that we have Canadian CPI, U.S. retail sales. Matter of fact, we got retail sales from a lot of different countries. We have uh, um, New Zealand employment, uh, inflation data coming out of the U.K. as well. And we have um, U.K. retail sales. Yeah, Aussie employment, U.K. jobs report, <laughs> lots, of, lots of data coming out this week. And like I said, the ECB meeting is going to be pretty key. Um, and so... I think it's going to be a possible mover and I'm going to tell you why and I'm going to tell you where I'm looking for the euro to go. So make sure you all stick around. We all has also have a lot of company earnings this week. So um, I'll, I'll cover some of the main. Uh, well, I think our main um, uh, U.S. companies that are delivering earnings this week. Um, I've got also some really big news. Uh, most of you know about the trader funding program. So let me go ahead and pull that up really fast. And uh, you know that um, that with uh, the month of July, um, and we've taken we've had a lot of people take advantage of this. Um, the month of July, if you take a trader funding program assessment, you get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that you know what tools you have available to you. But more importantly, I'm gonna kind of teach you what to expect, or at least tell you what to expect in your assessment and and kind of um, you know, some of the things that I used to pass assessments to help you access larger amounts of capital. Because I want you to, to uh, pass your assessments so you can access larger amounts of capital, to trade larger amounts of capital, to possibly make more money for yourself. So I want you to be successful, obviously, and so does the Forex Analytics team. Um, that's number one for the month of July. Remember, you only got about two weeks left, so take advantage of it, but more, a little bit different here. I have something really exciting. If you are a US based trader, make sure you stick around because I'm going to talk about a trading competition that's free, it's available to you and could possibly be life changing, career changing for you. So make sure you stick around for that. I'm going to be mentioning that uh, uh, later on in today's video. So like I said, stick around. It's going to be a big one. All right. So let's go into and, and let's start off with going into some of the some of the things that are available or uh, some of the things that are coming up this week. Sorry, that are available that are coming up this week. And we're going to talk about some of the key data points and and some of the 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 um, uh, events that I think are going to be market moving at least. And remember, if you are watching this video, it's a long one. It always is. Um, we should have um, chapters. Uh, if you watch this about two hours after three hours after it's been released or so, there should be chapters so you can kind of scroll through and get to the points that you want to get to. So Sunday evening, we're going to have like China GDP, uh, uh, China, China's re reporting unemployment, um, retail sales. There's a lot of uh, uh, industrial production. There's a lot of Chinese data that's being released on Sunday night, or it's Monday morning, obviously in China. But Monday is when we kick off uh, U.S. trading, or, or you know, worldwide trading rather. But we have Empire State Manufacturing uh, that's going to be released also on Monday. And let's talk a little. I'm going to talk obviously through some of these charts as we go through them. Um, Powell is speaking at the. Economic Club of Washington on Monday. And let's go take a look at the dollar index and let's talk a little bit about the price action of the U.S. dollar um, this last week. So, you know, the U.S. dollar, we're looking, well, I was looking for a potential move up to the 618 retracement. It didn't happen. Um, matter of fact, the dollar looks a lot weaker now following uh, it, like some of the data that over the course of the last, um, last uh, couple of weeks, especially while I was gone, has really started to show some signs of weakness. And that is important because if you're looking at the dollar index, you know, overall, we've got a triangle developing, right? 
We've got a triangle developing, and that means a you know triangle consolidation. Most of you are already are, are very well aware of that with the dollar index. And actually, here's the dollar index you can see right here. This is kind of the way I'm looking at it. Um, if you follow um, Forex analytics and you're looking at this chart, because you guys know I I use these charts here are for the week ahead specifically, but there are a couple common charts that I use all the time, uh, one of them being the dollar index. So if you're looking at the Dixie, you're, you're very well um, you know, familiar with this chart already and the breakdown of the dollar as it was happening and the key level of support at the 103. Uh, 80, 10390 level. You know, we talk about it all week. One of the things that we do all week is uh, we go through all of these, all of these um, instruments with you. Let me get rid of myself here. We go through all these instruments with you, and um, uh, you know, this it's private for the forex analytics traders. But you notice, you know, notice how we've been talking about that 10390 level. So obviously, that's pretty critical, and we are closing in on it this week. Now, the question is, can we break? I think we can. And really, it's the support that comes in around 103 that's going to be very critical this week. Um, now, you'll also notice, let me uh, let me just share, show this with you. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and change this to an extension. And then what you'll notice is that by the time we get to the 127% extension, you can see this this uh, triangle trend line is going to come in very close to that. Now, what is going to be the, the driver this week? I mean, yes, we do have some U.S. economic data. Um, you know, on Tuesday, we have U.S. retail sales. Could that be the driver? Possibly. What I think is going to be the real driver this next week is going to be the ECB as far as the dollar goes, because, you know, uh, the euro makes up 57 percent of the dollar, whatever the calculation is, 56 or 56 point blah, blah, blah. I forget what the number is right off the top of my head. But anyway, the majority of the of the dollar index is made up the, of the euro. So if the euro is moving higher, obviously the dollar index as a whole is probably moving lower. Plus, we've had a lot of intervention this week. I'll talk about that with uh, with with uh, with the, the Japanese yen as we get into it, because um, I know a lot of you are like, well, we don't know. We're right. We don't know. But if you follow price and you've traded through interventions, I'm 90, 98% sure that was Japanese yen intervention. Anyway, I'll talk about the US dollar Japanese yen. And we'll, we'll skip over to that in just a few short minutes. But I just want to finish up with the dollar index. Anyway, with the dollar index, we could see that that move that's taking us down towards that 127% uh, extension and that triangle support. I think this is going to be really important down here as we make our way down there. Now, can we go even further? Uh, yeah, we could go all the way down to um, the 161% extension or the lower leg of, of this triangle here, which might also mean that it, it becomes a little bit more symmetrical. But as you can see, there's a lot of support down here in the dollar index on any further drop. Um, some of the other things that are happening on Monday, we have Goldman Sachs, BlackRock's reporting earnings. Um, so keep an eye on some of these major financial companies, especially this week, that are going to be reporting earnings as well. Tuesday, uh, well, actually, before I even get into, uh, let, let's stop for a moment and let's talk about the US dollar Japanese yen. Because on Sunday night, it's Marine Day in, um, in, it's Marine Day in Japan. And uh, it is a holiday. But that doesn't mean that the, the folks at the BOJ and the Ministry of Finance will necessarily be on holiday. They are probably going to be watching this market rather carefully and watching the yen rather carefully. Now, I thought it was really interesting that uh, the, the intervention, at least the initial what I thought was intervention, you can see by the, these intraday moves, um, was following the US uh, CPI data. Right, CPI data came in weaker than expected, and my initial thought was, oh, you know, the US dollar Japanese yen, it's probably going to drop towards 160.30, which is pretty key support. Now, remember, this didn't exist, so I was like, okay, well, you know, very weak data, we're probably going to drop sub 161, we're going to trade down towards this really critical support, which is uh, the 160.30. Now, if you didn't know why that was such key support, you have to go all the way back here to the spike in April. And so we all knew that was key, right? So what happened is following the CPI, you started that started dropping. It was maybe about 10 minutes later. And then the rest of the yen pair started moving, whether it was the euro yen, you can see the euro yen, pound yen, Aussie yen, New Zealand yen. Now, if you don't think that was intervention, 
I mean, we can't know for sure. They won't admit it, and we won't know till the end of the month. But like I said, I've traded through a lot of yen intervention in my my short twenty years of trading FX, and uh, and that that like I said, I'm ninety eight percent sure that was intervention. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But uh, but anyway, what you'll see happen. Uh, after that is you know multiple times of, uh, of of a little bit more whether that was what whether these were sub- subsequent inter- uh, interventions or not is to be seen especially even on Friday. I personally think that the U.S. dollar Japanese yen is at risk of breaking 157. Um, 157 is going to be critical. Now, for those of you that don't and you can't see that, uh, let's talk about why this is so critical on a te- for for technical reasons. So what we're doing is we're we're obviously and you can you can pull that up just a little bit or do it like this, however you want to do it. We, we have a, a nice channel. Now, this is the previous intervention that was admitted by the BOJ. Here's your, your secondary action. And I think they're getting smart. I think they're actually trading. They're using, they're using U.S. weak data to, to actually press, uh, you know, yen buying. I think it's totally uh, smart. I think the, the the traders over at the BOJ. If you're watching this video, congratulations! I think you guys are doing, you're 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 you're, you're actually doing the right thing this time. Um, oh, God, that almost sounded backhanded, didn't it? Anyway, the reason why I say that is because now technically we are vulnerable. Because if you look at how important this is, and let's uh, let me let me f- tighten this up a little bit. There you go, right? And let's delete this, and let's um, duplicate this one. Okay, I'm just gonna tighten up our, our lines a little bit. You can see channel support, right? Now, from here, you'll notice that this, from low to high, is a 618 retracement. There it is, right to the T. Now, you'll notice that um, under normal market circumstances, I think this was normal, at least at the end of Friday, you'll notice that now we have a you know obviously critical support here at 157.40. That's really all I care about with the dollar yen. I think if that breaks, then technically it looks bearish. But more importantly, you got to be looking at other things too, because it's not just the yen that this could really build on. What else could could do it? One of the biggest developments that I've seen this week was the tenure. This is another chart that uh, that I use uh, when I do analysis on um, on forex analytics throughout the course of the week. I use this chart as well. Let me find the ZNs. I had them here. I thought I had them here. Maybe they're up here. Uh, let me figure out where is the ZNs. Oh, they're there. Okay. So this is a massive breakout of the 10 year. Now, I know a lot of you might say, well, have you looked at the two and the five year? Yeah, those are big too. And those probably because of the the curve and the way the curve is uninverting, you should probably look at the lower end of the curve. But so many people look at the 10 year. And if you're looking at like TLT and this is a look, it's a breakout from 2022, you can see it right there, right? Big breakout, big triangle consolidation breakout. As bonds break out, yields are coming down. If yields are coming down, one of the most, uh, one of the stronger correlations in the FX market is when the you're looking at 10-year yields and the US dollar Japanese yen. So if the 10-year bond market or notes market is breaking out and yields are dropping, that means the US dollar Japanese yen is then automatically very vulnerable. So that is, in my opinion, one of the key developments of the week, all right? So keep your eye on what's happening with the yen this week, especially if we start trading below 157.40. Now, continuing on, uh, on Tuesday, we have Canadian CPI and then we have US retail sales. Now, uh, the dollar Canadian uh, has been, and I'm gonna, I haven't talked about this with you for a couple of weeks. Let me let me delete some of this stuff. But you can see how vitally important, and we, you, you want to just go ahead and make a bunch of these, right? And just grab them and drag them over. You, you guys can see how important the 200 DMA is, how important that 136, uh, you know, 136 level. Matter of fact, if you guys watched the week, or the, uh, the trade-off show that I did with uh, Chris Weston this last week, my... Um, uh, play of the day, I believe it was the play of the day, is I wanted to short the dollar Canadian on a break below 135.90. Well, I think we went to 135.88. Let me look at the price. 135.88. You can see it right up 
right up there, 135.88. Now, what I did, let me just show you, because this is one of the benefits of being inside the Forex analytics community. Let's talk about it. Uh, I sold dollar CAD at 136.01, and then very a uh, little bit later, uh, I was adding to my Aussie dollar longs, and then a little, little bit after that, after we could not break down, I closed them all. So I closed all my US dollar shorts because the US dollar Canadian just stopped at the 200 DMA, it couldn't break, we popped right back up. I actually believe when I closed uh, the, the dollar Canadian on my short, I closed it for like a four or five pip loss. And then I turned around and I got long dollar Canadian at 136.05. So if you guys think that, oh, you know, oh, hey, Blake made this call this one day, that basically that's like, keep your eye on it because we're at such key levels that you gotta be trading around it. And if they don't break, will I go the opposite direction? In this case, yes. And I happen to be long US dollar Canadian right now. But if you want more information on how I do this and why I'm doing it, then and and we talk about it in the general chat room too. You can you know you know read my commentary and go oh why is Blake doing that and oh because it's it's holding and look stocks are rolling over and maybe we need to start you know reversing. If you want to learn all that, be in the forex analytics community. It's like being able to talk to me all day long, uh, minus the time that I'm sleeping. But I'm in there all day long, and it's not just me. It's so many other traders and forex analytics analysts. So use. You know, it's only one dollar for ten days to try out Forex Analytics. Jump in the chat room, and 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 plus, if you if you're if you're involved in the Trader Funding Program, you'll get Forex Analytics for uh, for a period of time based on what type of assessment you take or how big of an assessment you take. So there's that. All right, continuing on. Why is this important? Well, with you know, going back to the the, the Canadian, because if the Canadian breaks down on strong data and which tends to happen when you have strong uh, a strong equity market you know and and you guys have heard me say this over the course of the last several weeks one of the things that makes me so nervous about being long dollar canadian even though i am long do dollar canadian right now one of the things that makes me so nervous is if you look at the cftc data the market is aggressively aggressively short Canadian dollars, the speculative market, you know, small hedge funds and you know, small institutions. They're, all that speculative money is really looking for the dollar Canadian to go up to 140. It's just they're so aggressively short that I get really nervous about that. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I, if, if it breaks down, it's gonna break down. It's probably gonna trade down to 134 and change and before it reverses. But the, at the same time, we have a lot of UK data coming out. Like on Tuesday, we have UK or uh, UK. I'm sorry, Canadian um, CPI. But at the end of the week, we have Canadian retail sales. And look, if all that data remains weak, the dollar Canadian is going to break the other direction. Now, I want to show you guys. I'm going to go intraday, and I want to show you something really important about this dollar CAD, about where we're at. So, there's a real tight range intraday. Uh, you go to the four-hour chart. Do you know what this level is? If you don't and you're going, oh yeah, Blake, it's previous uh, support. That means it's current resistance. Yes, it is, but it's also a 38% retracement too. If you didn't know that, then you know, you, you're not following our analysis in the Forex analytics community. So what that really means is, if this thing really breaks above you know, 136, whoops, that's not what I wanna do. If it breaks above 136.55, uh, it's extremely bullish. If it breaks below 138 or 135.80, 135.60, you know, 88, it's, it's bearish. Those are your breakout points for the, uh, for the dollar CAD. Now, is that actionable ideas that I'm giving to you right now on the week ahead video? Is it? If you think it is, make sure you jump down in the comments below and, you know, tell us, tell the community how much you appreciate these videos and give me a thumbs up too. It's free to give me a thumbs up. It's free to give our team a thumbs up for getting this video out to you each and every each and every week, even if I'm traveling, colleagues step in, people with the Forex Analytics uh, team will step in and, and get the job done for you. And if you like these free videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up. All right, continuing on. So um, we have US retail sales, as you all know. On Tuesday, we also have, um, we also have 
Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, Charles Schwab, United Healthcare. Obviously, there's a lot of other companies, but those are some of the big ones. Tuesday night, um, if you look at the calendar, Tuesday night, we're going to have um, New Zealand CPI. So New Zealand CPI will also be coming out. Um, and if you want to, one of the things I, I, I have to say this, let's, let's go take a look at the Kiwi. Um, so the Kiwi still struggling here. I know I haven't looked at it uh, there for a while, but we had the RBNZ last week, right? They kept rates unchanged, a little dovish. The Kiwi got killed, uh, but because of the broad-based dollar weakness, uh, the Kiwi popped its head back up. So what does that mean for us that are trading the Kiwi? Well, um, I will reiterate that this trend line here that you can see right here, it, oops, not that one, dang it. Rewind that, there we go. Okay, this trend line from here, Let's redraw that a little bit and make it a little bit more succinct right to the uh, right to those highs right through here. That's been intact since 2021. You can see how vitally important this red trend line is. Matter of fact, I'm going to make that for you guys a little bit different. I'm going to make it, let's make it green because if we break above that, it's probably going to be pretty bullish. Now let's delete some of these FIB levels. Um, you'll notice that we've stopped at a 50% retracement, so that doesn't give me much confidence. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to put that. Let's delete some of the stuff. We're going to clean up our charts just a bit while we're using them. Okay, uh, but let's let's look. Let's redo that. Let's put that 50% retracement on here. So what that means to me really is a break above 61.50 will be bullish. A break back below. 60 40 actually probably 60 80 which would be the upper end of that that zone right there you know right there a break below here would probably be bearish so the good news is you know this is again this is um new zealand cpi that we're going to be focused on and on the new zealand cpi it's expected to come down just slightly you know quarter over quarter to 0.5 uh, i think it's let me double check that it's 0.5 percent versus 0.6 percent previous uh print um obviously stronger inflation it's going higher weaker inflation is going lower i mean that's you know but based on the dovishness from the rbnz you know the risk is still that you know it's going to be a fairly weak number regardless um whatever the data is we know the breakout points and again actionable ideas that you're getting here on the week ahead video all right continuing on wednesday we have uk cpi uh we have so much uk data coming out so i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm gonna go into the sterling in just a minute uh we have U.S. building permits, industrial production, um, uh, FOMC Waller is speaking. We have um, uh, uh, earnings from ASML, J&J, &J, and U U UBS. Uh, check this out with, um, I'm going to put in ASML real quick. This is um, obviously in the sem semiconductor, uh, hold um, semiconductor index and, and a big semiconductor name that you need to be watching but in and the next day we have taiwan semiconductor and you can see the stocks the the charts look fairly similar but those are going to be watched really carefully obviously because of the the ai um you know narrative that's going around the markets everybody's going to be watching like asml on wednesday taiwan semi on thursday actually thursday we have netflix too so a lot of uh again big earnings that are are happening uh but going back to what's happening with the sterling let's go ahead and take a look at the pound dollar and let's talk about it for a little bit this is a massive breakout and uh for those of you that do not know over the course of the last couple of weeks i've been playing the sterling to the long side i actually sold mine this week um for like 60 pips i think i bought it uh while i was on holiday and it was a big, it was a big move. It was a, it was a great move. I mean, I, I, you know, had a lot of fun just trading the breakout to the upside. But I did pull the plug on it a little bit too early, in my opinion. But you can see, I sold it at the 127% extension on Thursday, which was right here around 129. I think I sold it at 129.40 or something on the breakout. Anyway, it, it, it still looks like it has further to go. I mean, it looks like we're gonna we're gonna trade at least up until 130. But that's that all hinges on what the dollar is going to do, obviously, as well. So it's not just um, sterling, but because of the election, uh, because the labor market um, was it 14 years it's been since uh, uh, those of you in the UK could you know would would 
correct me if, if I'm wrong, um, but it's been 14 years and now you have the labor market back in, back in, uh, in charge. So a lot of people feel that's very bullish for sterling. Um, and you can see the price action has obviously been very bullish as a result. So can we continue up towards one, one, you know, 30 and change? Absolutely. This is actually 13016 is the number. 13016, 130 is the 127% extensions, 13020, roughly. Okay, so that's probably your next, you know, big resistance for sterling. And you gotta imagine dips are now gonna be bought. Anybody who's short's gonna want out on any dip towards 129. So you got you know, look at it like look at it in that fashion, just like it did a couple of uh, a couple of days ago. Any dip here is probably gonna find buyers now. And you can see a lot of support down here at 129. A lot of support at 129. Now, if we break back below 129, that would be bearish. I don't think that's gonna be the case, but again, this is more of a broad-based dollar story, uh, or, or not more of, it's also a broad-based dollar story too. So, dollar's been weakening, sterling's been rallying, um, and obviously, if you look at the euro sterling, it's been extremely weak. I just closed my euro sterling shorts from 80, <sighs> I'll, sh I'll share with you where uh, I got in and out. Um, somewhere up here, you have to go through all the trades. Um, oh, that's not, I'm in the trade, I was in the general chat room. Here's the trades room. I think I got out at uh, 90, uh, 80, 8401, I believe I got, oh yeah. Uh, Closed for 49 pips. Uh, oh no, that was the sterling. Darn it, I'm sorry. Just going through here, just some of my Euro sterling trades. Uh, da, 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 close that, and I think I closed. Uh, you have to go through all this, and I'm not 100% sure. Oh, here it is. I'm closing half of my Euro sterling exposure at 8401, and then I said, changed my mind, I closed the whole thing. So I closed it and now I'm just looking to sell rallies. That means I'm looking to buy dips in pound. So again, you wanna know what I'm doing and what I'm thinking throughout the course of the day, you can go here. And I don't always make money. Everybody should you know, obviously know that, but at least you kind of have an idea of what I'm thinking throughout the course of the day um, in the trades room. Obviously in the general chat room is where you could ask me why. why, why are you doing that? And I'd be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Okay, continuing on. Um, Wednesday night or Thursday morning in Australia, we have Aussie employment. Now, the Aussie has been one that I was on the long side of, and I know we talked about it possibly breaking the 50 DMA. This will be part of the review where I uh, review some of my best setups. I'm like, hey, if we break the 50 DMA, I'm gonna get short. Obviously, it never broke. It ended up breaking to the upside, so I ended up buying the Aussie dollar instead. So I went long. And I got out when it hit the 161% extension right here. When we got it, when we hit the 161% extension and we were just shy of 68 cents, I took my Aussie dollar off, my longs off. Now, the Aussie still looks really bullish. I thought I was actually gonna, you know, retest these levels, but you have to you have to imagine now. While the Aussie's above 67 cents, people will be buying on dips. Why? Because it has broken a major trend line. And I didn't think that was gonna, I didn't think it was gonna break. Um, but a lot of times, I mean, this is part of trading, you think one thing's gonna happen and the other thing ha happens, so then you have to shift gears at that moment and say, okay, should I be flipping directions? And if I do, what's the reason? And if I do take the trade, what's my risk? So if all of that matches up, like in this case, uh, I ended up buying the Aussie dollar while on holiday after the US jobs report is when I bought the Aussie dollar. It was probably, I don't know, 30 minutes after the jobs report came out. I even put in a pattern in play in Forex analytics at the time, I already closed it out, but you can see these are patterns in play that we establish and I, I did that uh, while I was on holiday. So if you, if you guys were you know in the Forex analytics community, even if, even if I was away, you still saw what I did. Um, that's part of the you know part of the thing about trading is you have to be able to shift gears and pivot, you know when certain things happen in the market. And that was a key one for me last week. All right, continuing on. Um, Thursday we have UK jobs. 
uh, Thursday, we also have the ECB rate decision. Now, this is going to be a big one because, um, you know, in the euro, we are approaching what I consider very critical resistance, which is going to be this trend line that comes up around the 109.50. Um, actually, it's closer to 110, if I'm not mistaken. Let's uh, let me redraw that a little bit. And what you're also going to notice about the euro here, and let's delete some of this stuff because we we obviously hit trend line support here and pivoted off of that. I'm going to take away that. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to keep this here because you well, actually I'm going to move that just over here. What you're going to notice is if we extend this move to the 127 percent extension, it takes us to about 109.65. And I think this is where we're going to be reaching for. Like what I mean by that is following the ECB, decision you know a lot of people were thinking that the ecb was going to end up cutting rates um now it looks like they're going to hold rates but matter of fact if 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 inflation does remain sticky in the in the eurozone and i think that you you look at european data over the last couple of weeks have been relatively strong there's a good chance that uh, christine lagarde and company could be pretty hawkish or at least more hawkish than the market expects uh now that move towards the 109.65, maybe towards 110, I think is going to be a very, very key development that we need to be watching this next week. But that's what I'm thinking about with the euro. Now, obviously, if the euro re reverses from these levels here, you can set up a double top. But we're going to have to see how price action plays out between Monday and Thursday when the ECB rate decision happens. OK, also on Thursday, we have uh, unemployment claims which everybody's watching because unemployment claims are starting to look very, very weak at this point. Um, in the US, we have Philly Fed. Like I mentioned, we have T Taiwan Semi, Netflix, and Blackstone are reporting on Thursday. Friday is gonna be UK retail sales, Canadian retail sales, and then we have um, we have uh, earnings from American Express, Schlumberger, Halliburton, Travelers Insurance, obviously a lot of other companies as well. Those are just some of the, the highlights. All right, traders, at this time, I want to talk a little bit about what is happening at the Gelber Group um, and something that's really exciting for you. Now, remember, you have to be a U.S.-based trader, but this is really exciting, and I want to talk you through kind of what they're doing. Um, first and foremost, you have to be a U.S.-based trader to apply for this, but this is such a wonderful opportunity for, for you, uh, for many of you. Now, uh, we have no association with the Gelber Group. Um, we have, uh, I have a, one of the gentlemen at, at the Gelber Group, his name's Tom. Him and I have a mutual friend uh, that I traded with at Gellos Capital for many years. Uh, so I was introduced to, to Tom and we've been talking through the details over the course of the last couple of weeks on how we could really discuss and help promote um, this trading competition that they are promoting. Now the Gelber Group, uh, some of you may be familiar with the name, but they have offices in New York, Chicago, um, I believe Amsterdam, and they are running a, 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 a competition called The Breakout, and it is free to apply. Now, just because you apply doesn't mean you're going to be able to compete in the competition. They're only, they're only going to take so many people that do apply, but it's free to apply, it's free to compete, and the cash prizes are significant. $20,000 for the first place, $10,000 for the second place, $5,000 for the third place. Now, you're probably thinking, but where have I heard about um, where have I heard about Gelber? Well, uh, Brian Gelber, uh, I believe he's the founder, CEO, but more importantly, you've probably heard his name in the Market Wizards um, book by Jack D. Schwager, and he's a legend obviously. And, um, you know, this is a really, really amazing opportunity for, you know, people in our community, especially if you're a U.S. based trader. Now you might say, well, I'm not U.S. based. They hope if this is successful and they're able to find some good traders that are retail traders out there, they're going to expand into other markets as well. Um, that's something that um, was verbally told to me. And I think that's pretty exciting. So why is this important for you? Well, I'm interviewing um, some of the the, uh, the the lead traders that are um, that are really hosting this competition on August first on the Face Show. So you guys know that we have the Face Show on you know every 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 day every trading day, 
on, so it would be Thursday, August 1st at 8.30 a.m. You register right here to listen in uh, and learn more about the Gelber Group, learn more about the, the breakout and what they're doing. Now, you might think, oh boy, if I'm not the top three, if I'm not the first or second or third place, I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not, not you know, there's nothing in it for me. This isn't true. You know, what, what the Gelber Group is trying to do is they're trying to find some discretionary traders that are outside of their um, of their 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 normal periphery in the retail market because they believe there's a lot of talent in the retail market and there is I see it in the forex analytics community so um, make sure you apply because even if you're or if you make the competition and you're not you're not a winner in the twenty thousand ten thousand or five thousand dollar cash prize you could still be selected to be a trader amongst them in the Gelber Group. Now, I had an opportunity years ago, seven, eight, six, seven years ago, to trade at um, you know the sister company of Gelos, then Gelos Capital. That's because of people that I knew in the community. But you have this opportunity potentially to do something great. And you might ask, well, what's in it for us? Nothing at Forex Analytics. We're just here to help them because I believe, and those of us at Forex Analytics, we believe this is such an amazing opportunity that it could be life-changing, career-changing for you. It really can. So make sure you are listening to The Face Show Thursday, August 1st at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, even if you're not in the U.S., Make sure you're listening in. And you might say, well, Blake, does this, is this, I'm in the trader funding program right now and I'm already trying to, you know, do some prop trading to be, you know, to get access more capital with you guys at Forex Analytics. It doesn't matter. You can do it concurrently. You can do them both. But this is free to apply and free to register. And um, they are really, really focused on how you trade, what your risk management skills are, what your entry skills are and how you trade the markets. You could you cannot you you don't even have to be first place or second or third to join the ranks of, of, of this group if you can if you can make the cut. They're really just looking at how you trade. And I believe in the Forex analytics community specifically, we focus so much on risk management and timing of your entries and managing risk and using a macro backdrop to help you know time your entries that i believe there are traders in our community that could actually you know take advantage of this and have a life-changing experience so august 1st 2024 at 8 30 a.m be listening to the face show i will see you there and i'll be interviewing some of the guys from the gelber group and they'll talk more about the specifics then all right, let's get to more of the charts. Okay, continuing on. Let's get back into it. Um, uh, I had lost my train of thought. Okay, let's cover just a few other things really fast. Uh, Nick from uh, Trading Analytics, he's been away for holiday, and then he, he was away um, helping somebody one of his friends build a cabin this last week so he's been out he's been out of the office for the last couple of weeks uh, so I'm gonna cover just a few things for in and in, in for him all right so first of all I want to talk a little bit about gold and what's happening with gold because gold looks very constructive uh, I thought we would possibly break down here and then look for a buy down here but just not gonna give us that opportunity what it what's happening is gold looks like it's consolidating in a very bullish manner obviously at this point in time we stopped breaking you know, stopped with the lower highs. So we broke this basically trend higher and that's gonna put, you know, new all-time highs. And you have to think about gold. It could really launch above here because if we start getting above this level, long-term, let's look at it, long-term. Here's your weekly chart. Whoops, didn't wanna do that. Here's your weekly chart. Big channel. We get above 2450, 2500. Who knows where this could go? Um, gold looks very, very constructive here. Um, copper pivoted off a of very key support. If you guys haven't seen copper, big support. We talked about it here at uh, at at 434. Big support, bounce right off of it. Um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll mention crude really quick just because I think crude oil is right now stuck between 80, 50, which will be right there. Let's just do this. 80, 50 and 84.45, which is the 78% retracement or 84.50, which is 78 retracement. So this is the range. If you trade crude oil, this is your this is your range of importance, right? That's where you, that's that's your sandbox to trade in it. You know, if it breaks out, it breaks out. Uh, but that's crude oil. And I want to revisit the S&P. OK, now we've talked about a potential blow off top in the S&P. Uh, it's, we've talked about the risks and every time you're up against resistance, whether it's here, you probably, we, you, we have to go back in time. Um, if you go back into, you know, early May, I said there were some risks that when we were up against this resistance, I'm sure if you go back and look at the week ahead video, I probably mentioned it there. I probably, I might've mentioned it somewhere around here. And guess what? We got to talk about it right now because we are at, whoops, I didn't want to do that. We are at once again key channel resistance in the s p actually let's grab this uh this red line here let's clone that and you can see it's channel resistance i'm going to make this a different color just to because it's coinciding with the 200 period moving average so let's do that uh, let's make that blue let's make that blue whoops and you'll see that what what's happening with the this price action in the S and P is it's the uh, the uh, the trend is accelerating higher, so it's not you know losing strength; it's actually increasing in strength, which makes it more vulnerable to a blow off top because you can only accelerate so high. It's like uh, you know take a I guess the example I could use take a tennis ball and throw it straight up in the air. And it'll go up and then at some point gravity is going to take hold and it'll come right back down again. And that's what is happening with this accelerated move in the S&P. It could accelerate. We don't know where the top could be. We don't know when the blow off actually happens, if it ever happens. But the risks increase whenever you're pushing resistance and the, um, the acceleration of the, uh, sorry, the acceleration of the move is continuing higher. So and you can see we're approaching the 161 percent extension of this previous range we break through 5700 and i i think the risks are that you start we, we start seeing 100 point s p moves higher until the madness stops so is a blow off top still possible it sure is and you can see clearly clearly here let's uh let me let me change this clearly we're up against the 161 percent extension now you guys have seen this chart every week I didn't think we'd make it quite up this high, but here we are. And look at the price action at the end of the week. The sell-off following the CPI was gobbled right back up again following even a hot producer prices on Friday. Just shows you how bullish this market is. A couple of other things I want to cover, then I'm going to review the trades from the last couple of weeks and give you my best three setups of the week. All right, um, one other chart I wanted to show you really quick is the Nikkei. Really important um, on the Nikkei here because we're at the breakout point. You can see it. We're holding it for right now. But watch the Nikkei. And that's super important support right there. You can see it right there. Let's get rid of this green line for now. Actually, I'll just make it a different color for now just to differentiate the two. But you can see really big support. And matter of fact, let's uh, zoom in a little bit in the, in the Nikkei. I think the 38% retracement is just slightly below. You know, you start getting below that, yeah, I guess I would say this support right here, it's going to probably open up some downside. So that is around 40,700, somewhere around there. Then you, then you might see some downside open up because then you get below the 38% retracement, false breakout. You, you, you guys get the story there. Um, and uh, one last thing I should mention is crypto. You know, look at Bitcoin. Um, by the way, Bitcoin is right at channel support, continues to hold. We drew that channel out months and months ago, but you can see how it's respected it over the last couple of weeks, how important this is. You know, this is the, the difference between are we going to get a, a bull flag pattern longer term 
and a cup and handle pattern in in uh, in in crypto, or are we going to get a severe breakdown? That's how important I think the 55, 50, 55, 53,000 level is going to be. You know, right here, I guess it's 53,000. Start getting below that and uh, things get a little nervous. Okay, this is the point I want to talk about uh, some of the setups from two weeks ago. So remember, it was two weeks ago. Uh, so first one was Pound Aussie. And uh, I was long. And I actually closed it at the beginning of this week. A little early, but I ended up. Was it the beginning of this week that I closed? I believe it was on Monday. But anyway, we we're looking for a move off of the support that happened. Um, and you know, if even if you were with me and you you stuck in it a little bit longer, um, great. If you held it for the last two weeks, congratulations, you did well. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it moved right off of that support as expected. So first setup worked well. Second setup was short Aussie dollar back below the fifty DMA, add below sixty five eighty. That was my comments from. Uh, two weeks ago. Well, we never broke the 50 DMA. You can see it right there. I put it, I highlighted the 50 DMA at the time and I said, we got to break below that. Never happened. So scratch, never happened. Uh, the other one was short gold on breakdown only below 2270, 20, range extension to 2150. Obviously, we just went over that. That never happened. We never broke down and we never did that range extension, right? The range extension would have looked like this if we broke down and then we looked to buy it at uh, uh, range extension to 2150 and look to buy it you know, down there. Oh, because the range extension was here. It's like this. Uh, that never happened. So scratch that because we never broke below 2270. So one worked out, two of them, they just, they, they, the setups didn't come come through. All right. So here are my three setups for this week. So the first one is Euro dollar. I'm looking too short at 110 or, you know, somewhere really close to 110. Uh, I would say, you know, a move all the way up to, you know, 99 or 199, 109, you know, 75 to 110. I'm looking for a Euro dollar short up into this area. So I'm looking for this because ultimately, I think the U.S. You, 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 the the Fed's going to be hard pressed to actually cut rates um, come September ahead of the elections. So I believe they're going to end up keeping rates unchanged, and the dollar is going to strengthen as a result, even if U.S. data weakens a little bit. But I think that the euro um, short at 110 gives a great risk reward opportunity. All right, next one: buy dollar max at um, at 1740 now. We are at the 50% retracement. Um, the the 1740 level is right here at this green line. Um, but if you listen to Ryan Littlestone, uh, my colleague at Forex Analytics and who and, and hosts the Flow Show, and he's on the Face Show with me every single day, um, you would he's been saying 1740, 1740, 1740, literally for like weeks. Well, I like it because it's a quick A B C D correction in a ultimately very bullish breakout and it's right at previous resistance, previous resistance, which should be current support. So if we get down to 1740, I think the US dollar Mexican peso provides a great risk reward opportunity for the long. Uh, last but not least, short dollar yen at 160. So that means basically any move back up here. I'm looking, ooh, not that. I'm looking for a short any move back up towards 160. I'm looking to take a trade on the short side or a break below 157 on a on 15740 on a breakdown. I'm looking to trade it on the short side. So, those are your three setups of the week and guys and gals, if you enjoyed this week ahead video and you think it's going to help prepare you for the next week, give me a thumbs up. Comment down in the section below if I missed something or I made a mistake, which could definitely happen. And I hope you all have a great remainder of the weekend. And thank you so much for spending your time with me because your most valuable asset is your time. So given that you spent it with me, I do appreciate you. I'll catch you on the Monday Face Show. See you all there. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.